Welcome, it means welcome back to his stream. Welcome to my early stream at his church. Um, I'm so excited to make sure at the cross. And uh, you're gonna so, sing at the cross. So make sure we remember when we say this topping and it's working for the God we don't call for this is for doing me YouTube and uh, maybe it's how it's all things. Uh, me don't go to call for it. Um, but make sure we got fully with the same with the same cross. And uh, you crib, and uh, what I'm doing also is when we a crest, and um, the world is so excited. I'm trying to bad this, and it's so the world want to talk to him and pack times, and the world will make sure you'll force show him songs of what's in night, because the world will force show him and God is wanting You're worshiping him. I'm telling you, he has been on me for the last hour to get this Bible study started so we can get it going and get it uploaded for you tonight. He has been, he's telling you, he has been listening to singing songs uh, off of YouTube, and and he talked about the tithes and offerings. Uh, is that important? It is, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. So I want you to know that you are loved. And tonight as we go deeper to grow stronger, uh, I want us to realize and to remember what the ministry and missions outreach for this month is. For this, uh, not for this month, for this week. Yeah. And, and it's not just for this particular week. It's what we're talking about uh, this week. But I want you to think about the shoebox ministry and how you can be a part of it. Uh, and you may say, well, that sounds like a broken record. Hey, we have a goal of 300. Why not? Why not? Maybe don't type it in. Why not? I'm telling you, God puts it in our heart. We got to go after it. And and for you, I'm saying, why not? Why can't we do this? We can do this when we put our minds to it and we come together. Uh, so I want you to think about the item of the month this month is band aids. So you can bring uh, band aids in uh, different size boxes for that. If that's what you want to do, you can fill a shoe box. Uh, but bring it in to where we can have those kind of items in there. And at the end of the year, all these individual items will add up and they will make a box, a shoe box. Uh, knowing that Heather and I have decided that we are offering to pay for uh, the shoe box shipping cost, which is yeah. about $10 a box. So, yes, if we can get 300 boxes, let's do it. Let's live by faith. Uh, and go conquer that. Uh, don't forget that as we live out that calling to give God his tithes and our offerings. Yep, I see you pointing uh, at that one, but that's not there anymore, Mitchell. I know you you were, he was dead on. It, it was going to be there, but it says, honor the Lord with your wealth and the best part of everything you produce. Um, I deleted that picture off of my thing, but it's still there for me to be able to see. So I want you to think about how you can give God his tithes. That, that's the most important thing first. Anything above that becomes your offerings. And, and part of that offering can be with the shoebox ministry. Uh, so, Mitchell, if you could uh, let us go to the Lord in prayer as we look at, uh, e at Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to be doing that, but I'm going to ask you to pray, okay? So what are the numbers um, as the team is? Uh, we're gonna speak prayers. about 15 minutes. So, so it's always been about 10 minutes. And we're all in the prayers. I don't know if you're Bible. Um, no, I'm gonna make sure 10 minutes. And uh, it's on and pray. Um, but make sure I'm gonna miss money. When I want to open up press money. You can pray about them so, giving their money. Yeah, you can pray. I want you to pray. Uh, make sure press money. Yep. 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 Go ahead and pray. You know, Bobby Moon, guys, how much stay? Uh, no. I pray as I'm trying to buy this. Lord, I pray. Uh, Lord, I need to ask your church in that. Uh, Lord, I, I pray that God. Lord, I pray in church is suffering. Lord, I, Lord, I don't even Bible study. And, Lord, I need to be real. I need to call back. Um, Lord, I, I pray that God. Um, for me just to wait. Amen. So the birds went in the night. Uh, I know you're really, really birds. Uh, we both tried to that. Uh, we tried to do a Uh, you know what your verse is? Why is my stronger? Why is it God trying to badness that God is? 
Knowing the promise is a prayer in God. It prioritizes that as a water. Once it is God, the message he has your mind now for struggle, the team, the sad, and God. And the performance that we tried to buy 21, 26. It is chapter uh, 5, verses 15 yeah. through 20. And yeah. let me just ask this question. This is just, as, as I'm sitting here, how has unhappiness helped you in your life? even one time happiness is about happenings it comes from the word meaning happenings what is happening around you your circumstances your situations determines whether or not you're happy or not so unhappy is still based upon your circumstances how has that helped you in your life when will you find the joy that goes beyond the circumstances to say, you know what, this, this today may be a struggle. Today may not be great, but I'm going to be joyful in the Lord. This guy right here next to me, you have joy. Yeah. Yeah. Do you sing <laughs> songs to the Lord? Yeah. Yeah. If there's ever verses for him, these are the verses we're getting ready to read. I remind you, you want me to click that off as we're going deeper to grow stronger. We talked about this on uh sunday and i will remind you of the youtube channel i encourage you get on there and 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 subscribe to the channel there's things that i put on there throughout the week it's about our health it's about finances it's about spiritual it's about mental uh, it's about uh, relational stuff it just changes according to the day uh, life can be transformed so the bible says so be careful how you live be careful how you live. That word live is important tonight. Or in the morning whenever you're watching this. If you're not watching this at the time, it's going live. But I want you to think about life is meant to be lived. And so many of us are catapulting to the dead end of life. And we're trying to skip things, fast forward through things, always wishing for something to be changed, something to be different, something to be better. And we're living life unhappy. And no intention of talking about unhappy, but man, the joy of the Lord in Mitchell is, if it's not infectious, I don't know what is. Are you infectious for the Lord? Not bad infectious, but good infectious, joyful and in, uh, infectious so be careful how you live don't live like fools but live like those who are wise make the most of every opportunity we talked about this on sunday i highly encourage you if you missed that message to go back and watch it it's there on the henderson facebook page it's on my uh Jesus follower page there on YouTube, uh, and I want you to know this is an important message for you. As we look at this and we make the most of every opportunity, the problem is, is most people see obstacles. 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 Things that make them stop. You know what I mean? Obstacles. You know, it's yeah. It's the only struggle has. You know, it's all helmets, all helmets, all obstacles. You know, you had yeah. obstacles in high school, didn't you? Yes. Yes. I mean, let's think about that. All the obstacles. Did you graduate high school? Yeah. Yeah. Last year, didn't you? You got to walk down. Did you do a little dance when you walked? Yeah. Yeah, because you were happy, weren't you? Yeah, it was when I walked in. Yeah, and I want you to know the obstacles in front of us. The, to think about Down syndrome and, and to think about how... I have Mitchell in my life and to realize that whenever you change your view of obstacles and you start seeing obstacles as now opportunities, it changes. It changes how you see life. But for most of us, we're not making the most of every opportunity that is before us. We're just living life. So many Christians today are living an unhappy life. Where is it getting you? 
Where does sitting around being unhappy about this, unhappy about that, unhappy about that, and this, that over there, I'm unhappy, and you just negative, unhappy all the time. Where is it getting you? Misery loves company. But what has misery done for you? How has it helped you to live a life of opportunity? To make the most of every opportunity. How is it that you are living a life of understanding? See, the Bible says don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. You do it. You got your spirit. God is spirit. Yeah. And he wants you to use that spirit. He wants you to use the spirit. I'm telling you, I am so thankful to God for yeah. the opportunity to have Mitchell in my life. Me? No, uh, what I was going to tell him, uh, no, I was saying, God, uh, but Mitchell, but I was saying in church, and I don't, you know, over you, Major, dad, you know, there's some call, and there's some parents, and, but make sure you don't really ask it, but, because, but we, you, don't call, and that's nice, but we talk about, um, because, in church, but a woman told him about what say, and, the charge of bad is, that guy, don't just don't really apologize, you can't don't really apologize, you always only really struggle on the team, that's why I'm going to make sure you don't really apologize, you just you were old and so strong. Habit. That's why you were baptized, because you want to be a part of the team. Yes, that's what he said. And I want you to think about consistency. The opportunities that you have, are you being consistent? I easily see a couple of people each each Wednesday that are consistent here, growing, striving to to dig deeper into their life. I hear other people that during the COVID times they were on like. I mean, serious, I am on for the Lord. And then all of a sudden, things start happening and life starts opening back up. And as life opens back up, all of a sudden, there are other things going on. And now church becomes an obstacle, no longer an opportunity. They no longer see church and Bible study as something to be consistent with, something to per- persevere with. They That never give up mentality kind of leaves them because things are kind of gotten, gotten back to normal. We all decide to go after normal. But that becomes acting and not living with a thoughtful attitude. To think about it, don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. What is the focus? Who is the focus of your life? I I just talked about this to my kids the other day. The focus of my life is not them. The focus of my life is not my wife. The focus of my life is not being a pastor of a church. That will end one day. One day I'm going to get to the end of my life. The only focus that would matter is my focus upon Jesus Christ. And when I stay focused on Jesus Christ, and that is my focus, my number one my above all things, the real, the reality that I have an opportunity to stay focused on Him, all the other things in life start come falling into place. I realize that, 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 that number one is Him, but number two is my wife. And when I keep her as number two in my life and not number one, then I realize that I can do this together and we team up and we realize that the kids are not number two. The kids are not number one. The kids are number three. And it's actually a a benefit for them to be in that order because now Heather and I come together stronger and I get to come together stronger with Heather because that I'm so strong with the Lord. So I want you to think about how you are living your life and let's uh, let's see. Let's go to the next verse, Mitchell, because this is how we're going to do that. Uh-uh, you're going too far, buddy. Right there. Go ahead and click A. Yes. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mitchell, you were saying it a minute ago. It's about singing songs to the Lord. You were singing them. 
full of the Holy Spirit is the power you have in your life through the Holy Spirit that God has given? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And you talk about it. You find joy in it. He has every reason to feel sad and, and to feel down. And yeah, does he always get his way? No, he doesn't. Does he always like it? No, he doesn't. But there is a joy that is that just bubbles out. Out. Yeah, it bubbles out of you. Look at the smile. Look at the camera and smile at them. <laughs> Don't live in unhappiness. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. For many of us on here right now, you're saying, well, I'm not getting drunk, so that doesn't really talk about me. And that's fine. I don't. I, I don't drink. I never have. I never will. It just does not resonate with me at all. But eating unhealthy foods, finding comfort in those unhealthy foods, yes, I did. Ice cream, double-stuffed Oreo cookies. And not chocolate sauce over top of the ice cream, the the chocolate chips in the ice cream, right. all of these things filling myself up, trying to find comfort in food. The idea is is that there is only one place to find comfort. It's in Jesus. Yeah. So he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. The grammar here suggests that believers' lives are to be continuously. Filled with and governed by the Holy Spirit. Filled with consistently each and every day. I want to go back to that word opportunities. Consistency. This idea of being filled with the Holy Spirit is not just a one-time thing. It's an over and over and over again thing. It is the idea that I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to tell me where to go, how fast to go that way, when to go, why to go, and to continue moving in that direction. And then he says these words, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns in spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts. Yeah, I'm a little bit better than I am. But you tell me, no matter what I was it's all major. If you're not major, well, you just sit in there. I mean, so I'm going to let my own soup work. Because I don't think, I'm just, I'm going to let my own soup work. I'm going to let my own soup work. Because I'm going to let my own soup work. You know, I mean, Do you feel together. stronger when you sing to the Lord? Yes. Yes, that's what he's saying. Well, what is you, that's, you know, you I know, well, buddy. Yeah, I, yeah, it does, Mitchell. I know you're does, saying it. You he doesn't like it when I tell you again. I just want to make sure you get what he's saying. <laughs> I am so proud. I'm so proud. He shows me more about God than than people who know more about the Bible than I do. Because so many people know so much, and yet they do so little for the Lord. They know so much, and yet they live in such a negative mind space of their mind. They know the Lord so well, they can quote Scripture backward and forward. They can tell me that I'm reading it out of this version or that version, and yet their hearts are still hardened to the joy of God that reflects the image of his son. To know him is to love him. To love him means you want to tell other people about him. You want to sing songs to him. You want to follow his word and be governed by and consistently following the Holy Spirit and the call of God upon your life. And yet so many Christians today, they're not they're not being filled with the Holy Spirit. They're not singing psalms. They're not singing songs. They're not making music in their hearts to the Lord. And what we realize is, is that when we do this together, it transforms our lives. See, make the most of every opportunity. And yet for some, while it's online... It's easy. It's easy to get distracted. 
It's easy to be doing this, that, another, answering things, multitasking and going, I'm kind of on, I'm kind of on, I'm just partially on. But you're not fully engaged. You haven't really slowed down to hear the call of the Holy Spirit on your life to say, I'm not going to act thoughtlessly. I'm going to understand what the Lord wants me to do. What does he want me to do? He doesn't want you to fill your life with other stuff that's meant to be the only place he resides. To not look for comfort in food, not to look for comfort in alcohol or drugs or pornography or in uh, and other things that are out there, material goods that, that only last for a moment. Because ultimately, he wants us to uh, give thanks to the Lord for everything. To God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to know that there is joyful praise that is in response to God's saving grace. There is joyful worship in response to God's wonderful saving grace. There is the ability to give thanks because of his saving, wonderful grace. It is fitting to be joyful. It is fitting to worship him. It is fitting to give thanks to the Lord. And yet so often we sit back in our unhappy modes of life. He wants us to know this. And I want you to know that it happens through Jesus Christ, who is our mediator between God and man. Okay. Yep. yep. And I know you have these verses. When I was walked out of the room, I come back, he had, I had my Bible app open, and next thing you know, I look down, and he's pointing, pointing, pointing. I don't know if I underlined these or he did, but I haven't been in this chapter for a little while, so I don't even know how he found it, but he did. So we're going to look at Philippians chapter 1, verses 9, 10, and 11 as we kind of wrap this up and what we do and how we give thanks and what is important the opportunities that are there for you. So go ahead and click A there, Mitchell. So it is. Yep. I so, pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. Knowledge and understanding. For I want you to understand what really matters so that you may live pure and blameless lives until the day of Christ's return. I mean, what is this? May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ, for this will bring much glory and praise to God. Yeah. Mitchell, I want you to pray. Yeah. And then we're going to end here. But so, I want you to focus upon two things as we get off of here. Um, how are you making the most of every opportunity? And how are you filling your life with the Holy Spirit? in and through every moment of it. Mitchell, would you take us to the Lord in prayer? Lord, I pray, Lord, uh, you tell me, uh, Lord, and I'm born with mom and dad, um, Lord, I pray in the church, and Lord, I want I, I you to for me to have, Lord, that uh, make sure or make sure I'm going to get Christian, and you, uh, you were in charge of me, Mr. team. Uh, Lord, I, I'm praying that in for the uh, major and the uh, great and the the gay gay friends by me, mom. I'm new call on the church. I don't want to find you to school. Lord, I pray that church he like you know you pray. Lord, and we we do some major thing in it. Amen. Thank you so much for praying for the church, praying for the youth group and children's church. You yeah. prayed for our family. You prayed that each one of us will be filled with the fruit of the uh, salvation 
know what God wants us to do. So, Mitchell, if you would, oh. tell them to have a good week and tell them you want to so, see them on Sunday. I remember, so you told me, my God, it's sad that we can want to always. Uh, hey, so no, 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 it yes, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm gonna let them go play a song, and then you and I are gonna go in there for about five minutes and sing a song together, aren't we? Yep. Yep. So, you've won me this, so all men are not us. I'm gonna miss that day.